Hey everybody, this is Randall with Ironweed Studios. Today we're in the Ironweed Kitchen Studio. And we're going to make something that you can use to impress your friends, even impress yourself, because it's so easy. It's called a reduction emulsion. The reduction part comes from reducing some wine to about one-tenth of its original volume and then emulsifying some butter into that wine. An emulsion is when the fat globules from that butter are going to be put in a finely divided state, giving it an appearance of one solution with the wine. Kind of like when they make mayonnaise. Mayonnaise has a lot of water content and then fat is mixed in, but it's emulsified so that it holds together. Now, when I worked in the restaurants, we would make this a la minute or at the minute, right before service basically, and just make enough to pour over the steak. You can make it ahead of time and just add a little bit of a cornstarch slurry and that'll hold it together for a while. But if you're just making an, enough for one or two steaks, just make it a la minute. But if you're feeding a family of six, you might want to use the cornstarch. Okay, so here we go. Before we get to the reduction, we are going to caramelize some onions because that's always great on a steak. So here we go. Get your tools ready. And a hot pan. Right around 350 degrees. Add some olive oil. Some coconut oil, both extra virgin preferably. And some good quality butter. And just let those melt together and incorporate. And of course add the onion and you want to stir this up and get all the onions evenly coated with the butter and the secret to this dish is to constantly stir it add a little salt and some pepper and then continue to stir if you don't constantly stir it the onions are gonna they're gonna end up burning on you rather than caramelizing I like to use a little nutmeg, just a touch. In, in a lot of things I make, actually, I learned it from a chef I used to work with that would put a little touch of fresh grated nutmeg in his cream of mushroom soup. And he said the trick to that was just enough to where people could taste there's something there, but they couldn't really figure out what it was. I wouldn't really call these totally caramelized. These are more like buttered onions, but you know what? That's going to work just fine. Then we're going to take two to three cups of red wine. You can use any red wine. I, I think a dry is better, but it's whatever you like. This is an old vine Zinfandel. And you want to let that simmer. And that's going to start to evaporate and reduce down into almost a syrup. Now this is probably the biggest porterhouse I've ever seen in my life. It looks like a roast. But the best thing about a porterhouse is you can actually get two steaks out of it. Right here I'm going to cut the, the filet out. And then the other side of that bone is going to be the strip, Kansas City or New York. And a lot of people that eat filets, they just don't like any fat at all on them. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that off. And now we have a perfectly flavorless steak. So we're going to add some flavor. Now if you've never used Montreal steak seasoning, I, I think it's the best thing you can put on a steak. This is what I used when I had my restaurant. And that's all we used was the Montreal steak seasoning. 
but just a good combination of spices. Lately I've been using some smoked paprika on steaks that gives it a flavor like you almost cooked it outside. A little bit goes a long way on that smoked paprika, just like the nutmeg. I've got a hot cast iron griddle here. And you can see that that wine continued to reduce in the background. I'm gonna get a good sear on these steaks. Now you can see that wine has really reduced down into almost a syrup which is perfect. Now you're going to want to use cold, cold butter. And the best thing to do is cut it into about quarter inch chunks. But I'm putting the whole thing in because I am a professional. Now the trick to this is if you don't want it to separate or break, you got to do just like the onions. You got to chase that butter around the pan and continue to stir around it and emulsify into the, into the wine. And you can add a little bit of salt or pepper or any kind of spice you like into this, but probably not a whole lot because you really want that wine flavor to come through. And this just makes a really awesome velvety sauce that is great on steaks. And you don't have to use red wine, you can use white wine. Especially for fish or chicken, and you could throw some capers in that reduction and, and get a nice piccata sauce out of it. So I'm going to continue to emulsify this until all that butter is gone and emulsify it into the wine. There's that flavor. Just enough left for that strip steak. And there you have it. Real easy. The wine does all the work while you're cooking your steaks. It's just going to reduce down all by itself. You just whisk a little cold butter in at the end. And you've got an excellent sauce.